welcome back to my channel i hope everyone is doing well welcome back to another episode of what it takes so today guys we have christian brindle in the house and i'm asking him all of the questions you want to know how did christian get into the insurance business oh the things that he learned from his father good and bad and who are his key players in his office and guys he has a new book you don't want to miss this video if you want to get all of the scoop keep watching this video hi guys welcome back to the channel so today we have a special guest mr christian brindle hey christian hey patricia how are you i'm good how are you i am doing awesome um Thank you for having me on here today. I feel like I just saw you. Yes. You very have. recently. <laughs> yes. So you've been on the channel before, so a lot of people know who you are. But just in case they have not watched, you know, my videos, maybe it's the first time, introduce yourself. Who are you? Yes. Um, so <clears throat> my name is Christian Brindle. Um, I run an insurance agency located uh, just outside of Salt Lake City. And um, I have been a Medicare agent for about 10 years, since I was about 20 years old. I got in around 20. Um, and I run um, a large direct-to-consumer agency where we write a lot of policies in 46 states. Um, we also run a small FMO division of our, our agency. So I work with hundreds of agents across the country. Um, I run the Six Figure Medicare Agent Facebook group. I run um, the Christian Brindle YouTube channel, and um, I run the the Six Figure Medicare Agent Summit, which this year was our first year of the of the national event that's happened in Salt Lake City. So um, that's a little bit about me. That's a lot about you. You are a busy <laughs> guy. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, Christian is my mentor as well for Medicare. So so glad to have you on. Alrighty, question. So how did you get started in insurance? Yes. Um, so my my background in the industry is maybe not as glamorous as maybe some others, but um I think I think it relates to a lot of people, right? And um I think there are certain people that come into the business and they have a very good finite ability to understand a lot of key principles and just kind of understand a lot about the, the products, the business, and it, more so just about how to talk to people and write business and things like that. Patricia, I think you had that, you know, I think you are that person, you know, you have a lot of natural ability, a lot of natural instincts um, that make you just really a rock star uh, all the way around. For me, I got started in the business because I had, um, I had a parent that had been a Medicare agent for about 25 years. So my father was in the business for 25 years when I got started. So his career was older than I was at that point. <laughs> um, and so I got started at 20 and I came into the business and my dad had built his business in the 90s and the early 2000s. So he knew a lot of very old school ways to build the business. Not saying any of those old school ways don't work because I'm, I'm living proof that they do because I built my first six figures. I had my first six figure year before I was doing anything that we're doing today. But what he taught me how to do is he taught me how to make cold calls. So cold call people that were turning 65 when they were 90 days out um, for Medicare supplements, compliance, police, Medicare supplements. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we were running down old direct mail leads. Sometimes they were five years old, you know, knocking on doors and things like that. But we weren't buying leads. We weren't really marketing. We weren't really doing, we were doing a little bit of grassroots marketing, a little bit of referral partners, but not a, not a, not like we are today. And, um, and so that, that's kind of how I got started in the insurance business. And I just thought that's the way everybody was taught, you know, and, and once upon a time, that's how everybody was taught. But that's what my dad knew. You know, my dad was not really aggressively building anymore. So that's what he did when he was building um, when I was growing up. And so that's what he taught me how to do. And um, I just thought that's what everybody did. So I just did it. I didn't think any, I didn't think it was no, unusual or anything like that. Although, it, you know, if anybody's ever done cold calling, it's grueling work incredibly difficult work. You know, I'm talking three to 400 calls a day um, to schedule 
five, maybe six appointments a day. <laughs> and that's if you, and that's a good day, five or six appointments scheduled a day. Um, but the, the, the thing is, you'd come in on Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday if necessary, and you'd make three to 400 phone calls each day, and you'd try to schedule 20 appointments a week. That was the, that was the system. And um, it worked. I think it's harder to do it today than ever, but that's how I got introduced. And um, I was successful doing that. I made, I made six figures. I made a hundred grand a year doing that after a few years. And um, then I realized I'm like, there's gotta be an easier way. So then I started changing some things, but that's my, that's my intro. That's how I got started. (laughs) Wow. So how did you go from like, you know, how did you go from doing the old school way to like, progressing to today's world of generating leads like you know zoom mm-hmm. meeting and social media and all of that versus the dinosaur way i guess you could say <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> totally i mean i think um it was a progression so i i started off doing that and then after doing that for about four years i started actually buying leads now these weren't leads like they are today You know, like they were like leads today when you buy leads and I'm not saying buying leads from vendors is the best way to build your business, but a lot of people do it and they do well with it. Um, I was buying shared leads. So I was buying $8 shared leads. And and we talked about this recently. Um, You know, these were leads that were they, they, the vendor would say they were sharing them with five or six agents. In reality, they were shared with like 30 agents, 40 agents. Like, and so I started buying, started buying leads and I realized to compared to you know what people work today, I'm like these are these are garbage. However, compared to cold calling, they're great. <laughs> these are great, you know. I'm like these are actually people that want to talk to me, you know, because cold calling was is the bottom of the barrel in terms of like intent of people you're talking to. So started out doing that, and then I just kept gradually progressing, and I started buying you know direct mail leads, which we still do a little bit of that, but not very much compared to what we used to do even a couple of years ago, and. Um, Then, you know, we started buying digital leads and things like that. And then um, it just happened naturally to where I had a genuine curiosity about how we could generate our own leads. So I started to learn Facebook ads about three years ago. Um, I started doing our own branded direct mail, which I found to work really well compared to the generic direct mail. Um, And we just started doing a lot of our own internal marketing. And I just ended up just completely engulfing myself in that and trying to learn and study and practice things and test things. And um, I just had an interest. I, I think that really helped me learn what was possible and what I could do was the Facebook groups. The Facebook groups were really, really helpful for me um, in my formative years when I was starting to learn this stuff. For me, I didn't really learn as much how to do it. Like from, from the standpoint of, I bought a few courses and that kind of taught you how to do it. But um, it was more like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm getting. It was just more planting the seed. Oh, this is actually possible. Somebody's actually doing this. And I think that was really all I needed to kind of put me down the path of like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. And that's kind of how we grew and progressed. And, um, you know, our, our production as an office um, went through the roof from what we were doing before. We were always doing well before, but we started doing just so much better because there was an efficiency component. Wow, that's amazing. So I know that you're you have a lot of insurance friends, right? Yeah. And <laughs> As I do know, you. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, and I know that it can be like lonely. Like the insurance business can be very lonely. So mm-hmm. what made you say, you know what? I want to connect with other insurance agents because some people feel like, well, if I have an insurance friend, I mean. You know, they'll take my business or I can't be in the same, you know, I can't be friends with someone in the same industry, especially when you're in sales. Right. So what made you say I actually want to connect with other individuals like myself and like what made you even think of that concept? Yeah, I love that question. I mean, so my back back to my dad for just a second, not to talk about him too much, but um one thing he taught me when I was new was all other agents that are outside of our office are the enemy. That's what he taught me. So I, I, I had that mindset for a long time and I, I, and I, I, I would wear it on my sleeve. I would look at things like if I was in an appointment versus another agent and there was another agent talking to the client, right. And I felt like I was competing. I would, I would, I would, and I'm not proud of it, but I would say, you know, if I knew something about that agent, I would just be like, Oh, you know, I work with that guy. You know, that guy's got, yellow teeth or something. I don't know. Like, 
I would try to, and you know, I remember one time vividly, um, I went into a golden corral with Stormy, my wife, for those of you who don't know. And um, this was before we had our kid. And there was this agent that had his cards up at the front. I took all his cards down. I ripped them up and threw them away. Like I just had this nasty, really, really toxic, I think, mentality at the time. And one thing I realized was um, when I started to get plugged into the Facebook groups, I just saw that the culture was different. I think people realized that there's a lot of business, no matter what type of insurance you're selling, there's a lot of business out there for everybody. We're not really directly competing against each other at all, right? Maybe if you're, maybe if your office is next door to me, right? Maybe like if you're literally like across the street from me, that's a little different. But like if an agent's even in the same state as me and they're 30 minutes away, we, we, we could go years without ever bumping into one of each other's clients. Um, there's so much business and so few agents when you really think about it and you, you look at the metrics. And um, I think the Facebook groups helped me with that because it was very lonely. You know, I, I started off with a, a very good friend of mine that started in the office with me. And, um, you know, I always looked at it like me and him were going to do things together. But then, you know, as time went on, he, you know, he wasn't always around that much. He was around a little bit, but not as much. He, he wasn't around like me. And, you know, so there was a lot of um, nights alone building the business. Um, you know, I, I, at the beginning, I would work till 8, 30, 9 o'clock every night. And so um, a lot of days there would be nobody in the office. And then if there was somebody in the office, it'd basically be me from like four o'clock till 8, 30 or nine. So it, it can get very lonely. And one thing I just, when I got plugged into the Facebook groups, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a, sh- I'll give a shout out. Um, Medicare gurus back then it was called Medicare coach um, with Justin Brock. The first group I got plugged into and I was like, this is really cool. I'm like, this is just an environment of sharing of lifting each other up. Not everybody lifted everybody up. Some people were mean to people, but <laughs> um, is what it is. But um, I love that concept. I started to get plugged into the groups and I loved it so much. I wanted to make my own group um, to where like it could be my vision for what a community would look like. You know, I, I love the other groups, but I, I, there were some things that I thought maybe I would do a little differently. And so, um, and I just realized that I used to look at things like the in, the other agents were my enemies, right? Like we're, we're competing, we're in the same thing, we're, I hate you kind of thing. But I realized I'm like, these people, all, all these people are really cool. And they're really cool. They're just people like, like, a, like, like, a, like you and me. And um, we can actually do great things together, even if we're not aligned, because we can share ideas. You know, I can share what we're doing. They can share with me, maybe some things they're doing that I'm not doing. And a ra- a, 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 I, I just kind of morphed into this mentality of um, a rising tide lifts all ships. And, and I really believe that now. And I believe like we're strong together as a whole, because whether you're doing ACA, Medicare life, it is niche. It is very niche. And, um, you know, we're all in this together, you know? And so that's kind of, I just really love that. And, and it just took a lot of loneliness away. Now, now some of my closest friends in the whole world, even if they don't live here, and close to me are are in the insurance business. And I feel like, you know, we just we all understand each other. We understand what each other's going through. It's not easy to be independent. It's not easy at all. Um, and so it's nice to have that support system and people you can talk to. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. So what are your key players in your office? Like, why did you hire the people that you did, like the positions? And yeah, who are your key players? Yeah. So I'd say I'd start off with Carrie, who, who, you know, um, Carrie is the first person I ever hired. Um, and I just got lucky with her. You know, I think you, a lot of times with people, when they hire people and they hire a team, the first couple people they hire is a disaster, you know, and they kind of, you, you always hear that phrase, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. You know, I, that, that fortunately wasn't me right off the bat. Um, Carrie's been fantastic. Carrie's my assistant. Um, she's our office manager and, um, she helps her, her primary role is she helps with clients and she helps with customer service and kind of help take care of our clients. Um, I got to a point where I had, I think I had about 700 clients and I was the only person it was, I was a one man show. And I, so I was doing everything. And I remember I was going, I went through an AP where I, I, my, my, my new business production was down from the year before. And I was like, what the hell? I'm like, what is going on? That never happened before. Every year it was an uptick. And what it was, was I was spending so much time taking care of my existing P 
people, my existing clients, and I had nobody to help me. I was there. I was it. Um, and it was, and I, and I also was working, man, it seemed like I was working a hundred hours a week that AEP, like I was because to just to keep up with everything. Um, and I, I just would get got to the point where I was like, I have, I think I've reached my ceiling of what I can do by myself. I mean, I can still maybe grow, but it's going to be little, it's not going to be small growth compared to what I was doing. So I hired Carrie for that reason to help me take care of clients and customers. And then, um, I'm, I'm a sicko. I just, I, I just can't sit still. I'm one of those people. And so I started doing other things in our business and, you know, cause Carrie would, Carrie took a big load off of me in the production side. So then I, I was able to produce and produce very well, but I still had time to do other things. So I started doing things with agents as we started the Facebook group. We started, um, we started working with agents that wanted to partner with us with their contracts. Um, we started, um, we started doing courses for agents, private consulting and just different things like that. And I was like, I love this. I love the agent side of the business. I've always, I've always been a good producer as an agent, but so we started just doing other things in our business. And as we added more to what we were doing, um, I realized the workload would increase on me. I'm like, Oh, I got to hire another person to help with this. Um, so Carrie's the, the, the first person that comes to mind. Celeste is another one. Um, Celeste is my, um, agent relations person. So she helps with our agents. She helps with contracts and things like that, contracting. And for anybody that's dealt with contracting, you know that, especially on the Medicare side, and probably more than anything else, I think life in ACA is pretty simple. Medicare is more complicated with contracting. And so it's just an absolute, um, you know, just maze at times, you know, in terms of like steps you have to take and just all these things you have to do. And, you know, um, so having her has been a big help because I used to do all the contracting for our agents. Um, so she's fantastic. She does a lot of work for the summit. She does a lot of book work for, you know, our graphic design. She edits my videos now. So she does a lot of things um, in our office. She's actually not in our office, though. She works remote from Georgia. So she's our first and only <laughs> remote employee. But she's been fantastic. We, um, we love Celeste. Um, Bobby, who just started working with me about three or four months ago, is our first in-house agent we've hired. We've hired some in the past, but they haven't worked out. Um, Bobby's the first one that we've kept and um, he's doing really well. So Bobby is um, writing business to new consumers. He's you know, writing those new policies so Christian doesn't have to anymore. <laughs> um, my wife is an agent and she works in the office and she started to do very well this year. Um, she's, she, she's an agent as well. She writes business and, um, and so she's, she's doing really well with that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much our team at the moment. We also have um, we also have some um, a virtual assistant that we work with in the Philippines named Stacy, and she handles a lot of my social media. So she handles my LinkedIn account. She responds to messages, my Instagram, um, my, our our business Facebook pages. So if you ever message one of those pages, and you get a reply back, I hate to spoil it for you, but it's not me responding. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much our team that that our makeup is right now, and then. Um, you know, we work in the office with um, a couple of other independent agents as well. So um, that work that have their contracts under us as well, but they're not really on my team per se, but they're in the office. Well, that's awesome. Pretty good team, I must say. <laughs> well, I will get there one day. <laughs> you will. You're not far. <laughs> All right. So another question I have for you is what do you think are the key steps to become a six figure uh, Medicare agent? Yeah. So I always tell people, I think when you first get into insurance, I think the first milestone that a lot of people have that they're like, if I could just get there, I think is six figures. And I feel like to get there, I think the fastest way to get there is I think volume. I think when, when it, it's, it's, it's figuring out a way, whether it's grassroots marketing, whether it's branding, whether it's working leads, whatever the case might be, but it's finding a way to get in front of as many people as possible, as fast as possible. Insurance is a volume game always. Um, so like in the Medicare world, if somebody buys a, an order of leads, let's say from a vendor, um, then the, the, the common um, closing ratio across the industry, usually I think for, for an av average closing ratio is usually 20%. So that means you're striking out 80% of the time. But I think the people that can figure that out and figure out, okay, I'll get two out of 10. If I get 10 leads, I talk to 10 people, I will usually get two out of 10. You know, some, some leads I might get one out of 10, some batches I might get three out of 10, but the average will end up being two out of 10. 
So I talk to 10 people, I'm going to get two out of 10. If I, if I present to 10 people and it's a matter of doing the math on that. Okay. How many people do I need to talk to a week? How many people do I need to get in front of a week? Um, and that's the game. I think as much as anything else, I think talking to more people than the other, pre, than the other agents are, I think whoever talks to the most people wins. I, there's a common story that I always hear about from uh, Jim Rohn. If you're familiar, he's like a motivational speaker and um, sales trainer and he, he's passed away now, but I've, 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 I've really, I've always loved his, um, his videos and tapes and things like that. And um, he always said in sales, if I close one out of 10 and you close two out of 10, but I talk to 30 people and you talk to 10, I'm going to get more new clients than you. And I win at the end of the day. And so um, I think that's a huge thing for agents to understand. In my opinion, I think volume, volume is so important. I think, um, I think you have to work hard to, to, to accomplish that volume. I think you have to put in the hours and to accomplish that volume. And I think number three um, is make sure they have a full pipeline, have a, have a nice diversity of leads. I, th- I, f- I feel like, um, I feel like it's, there's, there's very much a truth in saying that there's not one way of getting new business that's going to just dominate everything else. Now, if you find something like that, it won't, it might not last forever. So run it into the ground, double down on it. If you find something that's really, really working, but most things just work a little bit and you, you want to have a, a diversity of those things. So I think people that understand that they, they need more than one flow of leads, um, they end up winning. I, I remember I had an AEP one year where I was buying leads from a, and this was years ago, but I was buying leads from a company called Health Plan One. Now today they're a call center in Florida. Um, but back then they used to buy, they used to sell leads to agents. They were real time exclusive leads. You could buy them for about 20, 25 bucks a pop. And we did really well with those. We had like 25, 30% closing ratio, which is exceptional with those leads. We did well with them. And one year during AEP, I put, I had my, my budget that year was $5,000 <laughs> for marketing. And so I put, I put all my $5,000 in that, in, in an account with them. I went all in with them and they had done great with us for us for years. I had no reason to think that it wouldn't work well. And, and I think their demand had gone up a lot. And so th- we, it, the, the leads were fine, but the volume had tempered off with them. So they were only to provide us, they were only able to provide us the volume of maybe two or three leads a week. And I was like, oh, I'm screwed. It's like October 20th. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. Um, I pivoted and I was able to work with another lead company um, and they were able to take care of us, you know, last second, thank, thank goodness. Um, and we were able to save our AEP, but that could have been a disaster. And so I think the diversity is really, really good. Um, I think everything works a little, nothing works a lot, as um, my friend Justin Brock says. And I think that, so those are my, my keys. I think hard work, Vol- play the volume game and have diversity of leads. And I think you can make six figures. I mean, there's a lot of people that do it. And I think in the Medicare game, you're probably going to do it in two or three years if you're doing it quickly. Um, there's very few people I know that have done it in a year. There's a, they're, they're, out, they're out there, but I could probably count them on one hand of people I know for a fact that have actually done it in a year because it's, it's hard to do it in a year for Medicare. Well, that is amazing. So give us one good nugget for any type of agent where they're they're independent, whether they're captive, whether they want to um, work at an office, you know, start their own agency. Give us one good nugget. What would you say that is? Yeah, I mean, um, I think if you're new and uh, no matter what role you're going into, I think I think there's certainly people out there that would be better in an LOA role, like a captive role, like to it may be at the beginning, right, to learn. Um, not I don't think everyone's meant to be independent and, you know, I might get, you know, crucified for saying that, but I really do believe that I've seen a lot of people where they struggle for a really long time. And I'm like, you might just be better off at captive somewhere, you know, where all you can focus, all you have to think about is selling. Um, But I think whether you're independent or whether you're captive, I think the number one thing you can do is whoever you are linking arms with is make sure you're coachable, right. And, And seek out mentorship. Because I think for me, another thing that really helped me once I started getting plugged in in the online community is one thing that helped me do things differently and grow was I started to get around people that were doing things differently. And I started learning from people and I started seeking people out and I started asking questions of people that maybe knew something that I didn't. And so I think um, having that 
meant constant hunger to learn more and that sponge like mentality where you're going to soak things up and you're just going to really be coachable. Um, I think is really valuable. And I, I mean, because if, if you're if you're linking arms with somebody, they're already successful, right? Like even for me as a new agent, my dad, my father was already successful and I I did exactly what he told me to do. And I, 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 I built a nice business for myself. Now, that's not what I built today. I had to do something different to build what I built today. But it, even his advice worked. It might have not been the greatest advice for today's day and age, but it still worked. And so I feel like a lot of people try to get mentorship from like six different people and their, and their information might contradict. And I think sometimes they can have too many cooks in the kitchen and they get confused and they don't know who to believe. They don't know who to trust. I think whoever you're linking arms with, just listen to what they have to say, um, be coachable and, and double down and you should see results. Cause I mean, if they did it, why can't you? Yeah, I love it. So what is your definition of a superstar? Oh man. Um, so the definition of a superstar to me is somebody that does things that people think are just impossible. Um, they, they put up numbers that people think that's just not possible, you know, like, um, and they, they're, they're, they're not just top producers. They're, they're in the 1% of producers in the country. I think they're the people that are the rock stars. They're the people that every, all the other agents look to, to, for, as an as a shining example of what they want to aspire to um and so that that's what i think about when i think about a superstar i think it's it's more than just a top producer i think it's just an absolute like you know one man wrecking crew that they put up so much business themselves that they put up as much business as like a small agency might or a small team might um and those are the people that i think we're all fascinated with right and i i i i i think you know there's certainly people that have written more business out there than i have um, but I've written a ton of insurance in my career. I've, I've been a top producer a lot. I put up a lot of big numbers. And so I wanted to put something out there that kind of talked about and dissected what do superstar producers do that everyone else isn't. So I had to ask Christian about his new book titled Superstar. Guys, let's hear what Christian had to say about his new book. Okay, so let's talk about your book. So you can find it on Amazon. It's called Superstar, What Top Producing Insurance Agents Do That Mediocre Ones Don't. Um, and I'm not saying anyone's mediocre, but I'm more just saying like top producers think of think about things differently. Um, so the book is about, it's all about the top 1% of insurance producers and how they look at things differently than everybody else, how they approach things differently than everybody else, how they have a different attitude about things than everybody else. And also their strategy, how their strategy is different than everything else, what they focus on. Um, and it's all about that. It's all about what I've had to do to accomplish the success that I have in my career. Um, it's, it's very nitty gritty. It's from the standpoint that it talks a lot about that you need to work very hard, right? You need to work very hard. One thing that superstars understand that other normal agents don't is a superstar is going to be a superstar no matter who your upline is. And I think that's a thing that in our culture and as insurance agents, that gets lost sometimes. I think some people feel like if I just find the right FMO, if I just find the right situation for me, then everything will just click. But not really, because that the FMO is not going to build your business for you, right? They, they might give you some resources. They might... Um, you know, provide you some guidance and things like that, but they're not going to get in front of the client. They're not going to pick up the phone. They're not going to do what needs to be done. And at the end of the day, that's a lot of times what's lacking with some of those agents. Um, and so, you know, I, I think superstar goes, goes at it from the mindset that like, they're the type of individuals that you could put them with any organization, any hierarchy, any upline, um, give them any kind of leads, and they're still going to outperform a majority of everybody else. Now, they might be more successful with the right hierarchy, the might right upline, things like that. They might be more successful with the right type of leads, things like that, but they're not going to crash and burn no matter where they are. They're going to be successful anywhere um, because they just, they, they, they accept that um, the old saying Zig Ziglar said, it, I, I, he said it better than me. So I'm just going to quote him. You know, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And so 
that's to me what I, I feel like the book is about. It's all about, it's a celebration of excellence and, and what it entails and what it takes to be an ex and, and achieve excellence as an insurance agent and insure, achieve excellence as a producer and, and, um, and hit new heights. And so that's what the book is to me. And I, I'm, it's very personal to me because I'm, I'm very, um, I've always had a lot of enthusiasm and, and love for, for, for that right there. And kind of what, what, what separates the best agents from everybody else? Like, what is it that, makes agents struggle to where others don't in the same situations a lot of times. Wow. I love that. And I would definitely leave the link to Christian's book in the description of this video. Thank so, you. Patricia. Yes, definitely. Um, so how can, how can someone find you if they want to work with you or if they want to check out your social media pages, where are you on social media? <laughs> Well, I'm I'm kind of everywhere, but I'm the most active on Facebook in my Facebook group. So my Facebook group is a six figure Medicare agent um, that has about 4,300 Medicare agents in it across the country. Um, so I, I, I'd say it's the third largest of all the Medicare Facebook groups. We're really gaining on Joanna's group. <laughs> Coming for you, Joanna. Um, <laughs> Sure. But um, so that's probably the place I spend the most time is Six Figure Medicare Agent. You can also find me on YouTube. I have a channel where we put out videos, um, of, you know, agent trainings and just kind of free tips and just resources and things like that. Um, but you can find us on LinkedIn. You can find us on Instagram. But the places I'm the most active that I pay the most attention to are those two. Um, the rest are Stacy. So if you want to talk to Stacy, those are the other ones. Those are the ones you go to. <laughs> All right. So your YouTube is your name. Yes. And then the Facebook group is Six Figure Medicare Agent. Yes. Yeah. So the, the YouTube channel used to be called Six Figure Medicare Agent, but I I decided I wanted it to be more about me and kind of like what I'm doing and things like that. Um, so that's why we changed the name. But yeah, the, the YouTube channel is just under at Christian Brindle. Um, and the Facebook group is Six Figure Medicare Agent. We have another Facebook group that's just getting started. It's got about 600 people in it called Insurance Influencer. So we'd love to have you in there too. If if you're looking, if you're just a group junkie and you want to get in as many as possible. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else to add before we end the video? <laughs> uh, just two things. So first I wanted to say, Patricia, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I always enjoy our time together when we get to collaborate and, you know, kind of do some content together. It's always great. It's always, it's always a good time. It's always good, good conversation. Um, if anybody is in Patricia's audience, and you've been thinking about doing consulting with her or you haven't subscribed to her or for whatever reason, she's the real deal. So you definitely want to subscribe to her at the very least. But if you're looking for help, she's definitely somebody that, you know, can help you with her consulting and everything like that. So she's definitely somebody that is very smart and can help you a lot in your business. She knows a lot. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I would say um, head over, pick up the book. Um, it's on Amazon. It's live now. Um, and I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. I've, I've, I've written a lot of books over the years. I think this is the one that I'm the most enthusiastic about, and it's my most favorite book. Um, my previous book for agents was more about my story, and it talked a lot about me and kind of my you know, upbringing. And just, it talked about me in, in the early years and kind of what I did and things like that to be successful. This one doesn't talk about my story at all. It's more so about zoning in what it takes to be successful. So I'm really excited about it. I think you guys will enjoy the book. So go pick it up. It's on Amazon right now. It's called Superstar and just search my name and should come right up. Love it. Thank you for coming on, Christian. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. And everybody subscribe to Patricia's channel because it's, it's awesome. I watch it all the time. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you, Christian. Bye, YouTube. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode of What It Takes. Go ahead and follow Christian on his Facebook page. And don't forget about the book. Go get the book. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching another episode of What It Takes. Please like, comment, share, and I'll see you, yes, you, on the next video.